Yeah. Thanks, Mayon. So I share my screen first. Um, okay. Um, so you should be able to to see uh, terminal and my, my browser on, on both sides. If not, uh, let me know. So um, to repeat what I already mentioned yesterday about the hands-on that we have, uh, it will be about uh, using Jetscape with the hardonic transfer approach Smash. And um, the three main goals are basically to learn how to run Smash within Jetscape as a hardonic afterburner. Um, then we have some probably some time since uh, this will run for a couple of minutes to understand the uh, inputs and outputs of Smash. And uh, the idea then is to look at the output and learn how the afterburner affects basically the particle spectrum of the event. Um, deep, so let me say it right at the start. So depending uh, on what you managed to do at the end of yesterday's uh, lecture session, and as we only have one hour, you might have the chance uh, to continue at the end um, by yourself basically um, and take the rest that you didn't manage as, as homework. Um, I will continue to monitor Slack uh, for, the, for the rest of uh, the day basically and also tomorrow. So if you have any problems, you can post them also there after the session and I, I, uh, I try to help. And the readme is also written in a way that you can um, actually are able to follow uh, for yourself. Okay, um, let me do one thing uh, or post one thing actually, because I think it, uh, I prepared a Google Sheet um, where you can basically uh, mark your progress of the session so, so that we don't have to um, ask all the time with the, with the check marks. Um, you find the link I just posted in the Slack, so please uh, open this and you should be able to um, put your name there. Um, and then you can mark basically your progress. So um, I wait a couple of seconds. So please put your name. You should be able to write it there. Try to not write over uh, yourselves. Um, and then you can already mark with an X what you managed to do yesterday, basically. So I put X's there um, for all the questions. Um, basically everything that we did yesterday in the, in the hands-on itself, um, uh, in the, so in the lecture part uh, already. So I give you some, uh, a minute or so to, to fill this in. And uh, I, it would be nice if you uh, basically continue to mark your progress here um, during the uh, throughout the session so that we can have a look um, who, who's done what. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm seeing that people basically, so everyone basically at least finished the Deadscape compilation yesterday, which is very good. Um, so if you have already started the, the, the container yesterday, um, then please uh, you can please restart it as you um, um, as you probably already know. So you, you run this docker start minus AI and the name of the container. So exit the hydro container and enter this JS smash container. If you have not um, started it, you can Look again into the compile and run section, the section one. Here's the command. Actually, yesterday there was some specifics missing for Windows and for Linux um, that I that are now added here. In the, so if you have some issues or had some issues with, for example, creating directories um, and on Linux, you should be able to run this now, and this uh, should work. Um, and one more thing. Um, please also uh, pull the current main uh, branch of the summer school. So before anything else, you do basically, um, so, so we are here in the Jetscape Docker um, in the usual directory and I just uh, copy basically what is here to once pull and um, 
then you see already that there were actually quite some updates. And I also posted some someone earlier, some things earlier today, so it would be good if you do that. Nothing crucial, but so. Okay. Once we have done that, um, so since I have done, have started Docker container yesterday, I uh, reconnect to it. So I now am again into inside the um, container. Okay, let me just have a look where you are at. So Jihan, if depending if you have not done anything, maybe we can you can follow basically what is here in the beginning of section one, um, mainly running the Docker container, downloading smash, and the compilation um, commands. For the rest, I basically already mentioned what you would need to do for to starting the first jet step one because we didn't do this yesterday um okay so here what we do to prepare basically the run of JetScape with smash um since we have want to have a look later at the collision output of smash we um, create this directory in the JetScape build So I'm now going into the Jetscape build directory. Um, and make this directory called smash output. Um, and this will ensure that smash will uh, write its own output. If it's not there, it, uh, um, it will just, uh, smash will still run and it will also um, do the hadronic rescattering phase, but it will only print to the um, Jetscape output itself. Um, but uh, collision output is only available from Smash itself, so we create this directory. And then the first task basically for the hands-on was to um, change something in the Smash uh, configuration file. Um, and this is explained here. So the idea is to go to the Smash config file, which is placed in the summer school directory. So let me open that. Um, So, and I will explain a bit later about the smash config YAML file. So this looks like this. Um, and if you look, what we want to change is we want to add an output, um, an additional output. So we currently only have the particles output, but we want to also have a collision output. And for this, we add the second section here, um, collision. And you see that there are actually different formats uh, that you can um, add here. Um, let me do that quickly. Sorry. I just copy this basically and change this to collisions. Actually, I copy that because I'm not good with typing. Okay. And change. So I save it. And um, this is now the, this file is um, um, as we will see later on uh, used um, the smash config file uh, for running um, Jetscape um, uh, together with Smash. So to run uh, Jetscape now, we are already in the correct directory in the build directory. And oh, sorry. Mm. So I basically execute what we have here and now Jetscape starts to run with um, the smash. Okay. Um, I saw that actually some of you already um, are uh, finished with the, the Jetscape uh, runs and some need to start. So uh, basically you should follow what I did now and start it um, um, as soon as the Jetscape compilation uh, um, has finished before actually in between the Jetscape compilation and uh, the, uh, the Jetscape run, you change this config as I just did. Okay. While um, Jetscape is running, which will take, um, depending on your machine, um, 
15 to 20 minutes. So this uh, takes some time so we can learn something about the in input and output files of Smash. Let me beforehand mention that what we are running is, if you look, we, we can actually have a look maybe in at the um, Jetscape user XML file. So what um, what we are running is a gold gold collision at 200 GV um, centrality uh, at 0 to 5 percent centrality, and we only run one hydro event, um, and then we sample the uh, particles from this from basically the hypersurface that uh, is created by this 100 and, and um, sample 25 events from there um, and feed this into the afterburner. That is commonly done to increase statistics for, for um, our transport um, calculation um, and to save runtime in the hydro stage, basically. Of course, you will not get event by event fluctuations from the hydro in this way because you smear them basically out. But we only have one, you only have one hydro calculation. Okay. Notice that you will, I mean, there will be some warnings that are not, uh, you don't need to worry about just to mention them. Okay. Um, maybe. Some general information is also given here at the top, um, some background and information on Smash. So if you any, um, I also posted it in the lecture yesterday, so just uh, for you to know, um, there, are, here are, here are also um, a couple of links that you can follow for more information in general. Okay, let me, uh, there's something in the chat. Ah, yeah. Okay, thanks, Chen, uh, Chen for, for sharing the spreadsheet again. Um, actually, so I marked this here in the text. So if people are having problems with the compilation finishing, let me know, right? It, I know it takes uh, some time uh, to compile. Okay. Um, let me quickly go through this and explain a bit about the input and output files um, before the rest, uh, um, while this is running. And uh, we can, of course, also read through this by yourself um, later on again. So for the, here are the basically, just because it's just here on the right, there are some warnings that are not important. So it's, it's, it's fine. Um, so as, um, as usual for the Jetscape models, the modules, you can configure all the properties in the, in the um, uh, XML file, in the user XML file. Um, and if we open this, actually, I will probably open this just here on, on GitHub. Um, so if you open this and you scroll down, this is now the difference uh, to the um, hydro section uh, session, basically, we have now not only a particleization module, but also a hydronic afterbody mo module here. Um, and you already see here that uh, there are three files specified. They are now all pointing to the summer school uh, transport uh, directory. And this is the uh, config file, the particles file, and the decay mods file. Um, and those are basically the three main input files for Smash. The config file that we already have changed um, gives you uh, all the options to basically alter the setup of Smash. Um, when Smash is used within Jetscape, some are actually automatically overwritten because it's specified basically for, for the Jetscape use. And if you want to learn about all the options, not only, um, for example, the output options that we now already used, you can uh, have a look in the um, user guide. For then there are two more. One is the particles TXT file that I briefly also mentioned yesterday in the lecture, um, which lists really all possible degrees of uh, freedom. So um, from of your hard and swift um, their properties, and this file can actually also be useful to for translating, for example, the PDG numbers from the outputs to the actual particle species. Um, and in the decay modes file, it, all possible decays are listed. Um, 
let me quickly open both and show you how they look. So here you see the, um, the particles file. For example, you see your pion with the mass and the width of the pion and also the PG numbers and their parity as well. And this is now here for all the species that we have basically in, in Smash. Um, what is nice about both of those files, also the VK modes file, that you can in principle freely configure them. So if you want to run a um, calculation only with pions, you just remove all particles from the, um, uh, from the particles TXT file and only have um, pions. Of course, what you need to have correct that there are no decays part specified for particles uh, in the VK modes file that are not in the particles file, but Smash will complain about that. So if, um, if you try to run it. So here are decay modes. Um, so for example, for the file, we have the K-on um, decay modes with their different branching ratios and so on. So you can look through that and see all the decays that I use within Smash. Okay, those were the three decay modes files, uh, the three inputs files that are um, mainly important. Um, if you already have finished your um, calculations, you can see that in your Smash output directory, you, you should find four files. Um, so the output, as you remember, is, was in the Jetscape build directory, and there we created the Smash output directory. And there we sh you should have, you sh should see three different, uh, four, sorry, four files. And this is the collisions binary file, the full event Oscar, the particle list Oscar, and the particles binary. And from the mains, you can already um, basically and um, infer that those are um, those contain particle, so are lists of particles. And here you have all your full event history, your collisions, um, and then the, those files um, are diff contain the same information but are different formats. So we have the Oscar format files that are actually human readable text output, which is a good starting point if you want to have a look at if your output makes sense. And you have your binary files um, that are not human readable, but are a bit uh, smaller in size uh, as they are binary. Um, and we have some um, published also some nice scripts that uh, use those binary files as you um, that also will be used later. Um, <clears throat> okay, if you I encourage you if you calculations already finished, you can go ahead and like open the Oscar files uh, as they are human readable, and you can take a look yourself. If not, you can also just follow along here and um, uh, see what uh, the excerpts that I posted on the readme itself. So you see here the particle lists where you see your event number basically as a header and how many particles are inside the event, and then you see the information of the different particles there. Um, and the header here tells you about uh, what each number means. So you have first value is time. So all at, uh, at 300 Fermi, which is the um, time that we specified as the finish time. Then you have X, Y, Z, um, and so on. So coordinates in your coordinates, mass, your momentum information. Then at the end, you see the PDG. So here you have actually, you have a the pi zero, the ID, and also the charge. And the units are also specified here. First, if you go further and open the full event history uh, output, then you see not only um, the, the, there are some lines that look similar, um, there are some particle lines um, uh, that you can see, for example, here. But you in addition, have those interaction headers that mark the different scatterings that were happening inside um, the hadronic um, scattering or in, in, inside the hadronic afterburner evolution. Um, so for example, if you look here at what I, what I took just from the, from the output is we have an interaction that is called in one out two. So that is a decay of one uh, resonance um, to two other particles. Um, um, again here, so the first part, first line is basically the decaying particle, and the other two lines are the resulting, the outgoing particles. And if you look here at the last line, we have in two out one, so this means that is actually a resonance formation of two particles 
going into a resonance. Um, yeah, and so on. So basically, this is of course a lot larger because the, all the information is, is, is tracked. Um, as a side, or uh, um, concerning the Jetscape output, the Jetscape output is written to this test out dot file, and this contains the same information as the particle list output in in uh, the section with the heading Jetscape module um, smash. So similar as you do here, you get all your information of uh, your, your final hard ones um, there. We are, uh, we, in this exercise, we will focus um, on the scatterings as well. So we will use the smash outputs directly, but uh, you can recreate the whole analysis of the PT um, um, uh, as, just as well with the Jetscape output. Okay. Now I did a lot of talking. Um, so as some of you already have finished, I, we can start with the um, studying the effect of the afterburner scattering stage. If there are no questions to the input and output formats, maybe I give uh, some time here and also look. Um, are there any questions uh, at this point to in input and output files? Or are you ready for? Uh, analyzing what we have. Okay, I think I don't see anything at this point, which is good. Um, okay, <clears throat> so for those uh, people that uh, already have finished with this uh, smash run, we want to now look at the effect of the risk getting the, um, on the final observables, uh, and we will focus in this uh, stage, uh, in this hands on, on the um, after binary scattering stage, uh, uh, sorry, to focus before we focus on the transverse momentum spectrum, and we will also later look at the collision history. Um, and to just have a first look at what we get from from Smash, uh, we have a quick example analysis uh, uh, analysis of uh, the multi just the multiplicities. So um, please go to the build directory first, um, and then. That is important. Uh, the following we just export this transport folder um, variable. So please do that. And uh, if you restart, if you restart the container in between, also you have to reset that. So just to be aware that the Python scripts will only work if this is uh, correctly set. And then you can um, go here uh, and run this quick multiplicity count Python script that counts, uh, in, in this case, uh, pions, um, protons, and kaons. And this just prints out, basically, um, multiplicities per event. Um, so please go ahead and run this. And then um, answer the question, what hardware species uh, dominate uh, the medium, basically, here? And note that the three particles here are basically the most abundant stable hard ones already, so you can actually in infer from the numbers that you get what really is the most dominant hard one species. And if you have some result, uh, some printout, um, you can basically mark this here, that you are able to run some scripts and um, maybe you can actually in Maybe in the in the Zoom chat, just post what you what you get. What is the dominant hard-on species? Let me take a look at what event I am. Let me actually get this one. So, uh, of course, I already have run this. Um, as well, so. Um, by the way, uh, the answers to those questions, if you want later to study this yourself, I also wrote this down here, the un answers um, are also uh, found below uh, here at the very bottom if you click on that. So 
let me also do it myself in, a, in another test container I set up already. So first I export this transport folder. And then you should see something like this here. So you can see that by far the largest multiplicities are uh, uh, um, pions. Um, as, yeah, as you also mentioned in the chat, very good. So I now take a look at the uh, Google Sheet. Um, so who has problems with running this? And so of those people, of course, that have finished already the Jetscape run, they should be able to, uh, to analyze this. If not, please write best in the Slack what if there's an issue. So I don't see. If you have any questions, you can um, yeah just ask, of course. Those people that have finished the first Jetscape run, uh, please let, let us know what where it's hanging that you are not able uh, to run this quick uh, analysis. I, I waited a couple of seconds. And if you have uh, managed to, if you have some problems, don't write it in the, uh, please don't write it in the, in the sheet, but uh, um, better on Slack. Okay, I see a couple of green X's. Uh, if you have problems, uh, please post it. Otherwise I would now go on with the analysis of the PT. Um, Okay, um, now it's, I mean, the command is very si simple. So I prepared a Python script that uh, now um, analyzes the PT. Um, and you can just take this and uh, run this command here. And this will only print the mean PT uh, values. But it, it will also just as well um, create a directory called results with rescattering within the Jetscape build. And there will be some files that have stored the average PT value and a PT histogram. And we can have a look at, the, at those results by plotting them with uh, this plotting script. The command is also found here. Um, so you can run this. Um, as well, this will not produce any output, but it will produce a file. Um, that is a PT spectra file, um, as I mentioned here, here, and a PT average file. So one plots just the PT spectra of the particles that we have analyzed um, and we again analyzed um, pi proton, pion, and kaons. And um, the PT spectra file um, and the PT average file. Um, yeah, just summarize that. Let me open them myself. I just have to. Okay, so the files, this is the file that you get. Uh, you should get something like this. So pion, crayons, and proton, just the PT spectra. 
and also the mean PT for, for those two, uh, for those three. So maybe as Abhijit suggested that in the last session would be nice if you just uh, post some of the results in, in the thread on the, in the Slack as well. Um, so that we can see that you actually managed to produce those plots, that would be nice. Okay, uh, again, if you have done this step, uh, you can mark it here and on the Google sheet. Um, and so if you basically manage to see, open those PDF files and produce them. Um, yeah. Looks good, uh, I see some people managed. And one thing that you now can answer um, is maybe if you first just look at the spectral files um, um, and the question is now, can you deduce based on looking at the spectra how the mean transverse, transverse mass has to be ordered for the different species? So basically just looking at how the spectra is, uh, is shaped, uh, can you guess how, what is the largest, um, for example, mean PT? So for this, maybe I, maybe I help you by um, opening this again myself so that you can follow. So this is the PT. Uh, spectral files and you can what you can basically see that they have different um, slopes right so the, the p proton is the um, has the uh, not the, so the pions are the steepest uh, and the protons are the less steepest um, and you can actually if you look at that mean pt uh, basically see that so mean pt is um, kind of a proxy to how the PT the spectra is, uh, is unsloped. So okay, now I give them the answer to the question, but uh, yeah, that was the idea here. But okay, I mean, now just looking at the PT, let's see if everyone is still with us. So maybe we, I, I, I am a, I wait a bit, or maybe if you have already managed uh, to look at the PT uh, plots, uh, then mark your X. I don't want, so I think we shouldn't lose anyone at this, at this point. That looks good. Because, um, I mean, okay, just looking at the PT spectra is of course not very, of, of one one is not interesting, but we want to see in the end, and this is what this, um, this hands-on uh, uh, is about, is basically looking at the effect of the um, afterburner. Um, and there, for this, we need a comparison result. So we now look at the result where we have included the late um, rescheduling stage. Um, and now we want to um, basically uh, exclude rescheduling's. Um, and uh, only uh, perform the case. And this is actually um, can be nicely done within Smash because we have an option uh, for this in the, in the config. Um, but before we run Smash again and do that without risk settings and with only the case, we, we basically want to save our Smash output for later. Um, and we do this by just making a uh, directory smash output with respectoring and copy our smash output files to that, uh, like so. Okay, actually my run is uh, almost, my, my smash run is almost finished. So um, let me actually see. Okay. So I have already done that. Uh, I have already created, uh, copied this. So please do so yourself. Um, 
and save basically this uh, because if we now it will get overwritten if we run again so that's why we save it for later okay so now we want to disable uh, all hard one collisions actually i can now do that myself because i have now the results with the scattering. So, the, so the, to disable all the hard run collisions only and only allow the decays within Smash, we change again the config file. Um, so we get ah uh, and actually I uh, for this time I think it may, it's good if you also get familiar with the uh, Smash user guide. So if you are motivated you can search for the right option yourself by opening the smash user guide and i've included a hint here so click on the error to extend to expand the input input and configuration and then click on the collision term and you can look for the relevant option here for some times and if you are lazy which is of course also fine you can click below on the solution but maybe try first to look at click for open this user guide a bit so that you have seen this as well because if you want to use smash later on this is basically the entry point um, for all information if you yeah if you are a user so let me see okay a couple of people should be basically um, at this stage and maybe i open it myself so this is how it looks if you're interested this is created with Oxygen, which is a tool to convert um, basically code comments into documentation. And as I mentioned, you can go into uh, inputs, configuration, and then click on collision terms. Co collision terms. So, and this is, as you will remember yesterday, I talked about the collision term and how we have different processes processes to, to model this collision term and you see some of them actually here. So we have two to one, we have different two to two reactions, different inelastic two to two reactions where you can basically include and exclude specific ones uh, however you like. Um, also mentioned, previously mentioned that we have multi-particle interactions um, and so on. So you can scroll here, there are quite a lot of options. Yeah, and there are also some examples below. So I guess you are now looking for it yourself. And as it's all, I mean, but so the right option, I spoil that now because we don't have infinite amounts of time, is there's no collisions option here. So if you look here, it says disable all. Uh, possible collisions only allow the case to occur if not forbidden by other options. And this is useful. It also it actually mentioned it's useful for running Smash as a decay after burner. Um, so it only performs the decay. So this is there's no collisions option. It's basically what we, what we want to add again to our um, uh, Smash config. And you actually will see if you open it again that this is already present. Of course, it's set to false as we wanted to run with decays, uh, with uh, with collisions. But now you can set it to true, and this means that only decays will be performed. And if we now run again, um, so basically execute it. So please change the config before you run again; otherwise, you will not see an effect. Um, but if you have done so. We, we start um, the run and this will be now um, faster, um, considerably faster, particularly the smash part, um, because there are no collisions. So this is of course computational, much less complex to uh, calculate. Um, maybe let me mention one thing that in the last session you also run um, particleization with um, decays. And this is uh, a fully equivalent if you only include a particleization module like ISS and um, run only with decays, you can, uh, you get basically the same, the same result. Uh, 
as we done this, we done here with smash. So we don't you need a uh, hardware transport approach to just perform the case, of course. But uh, as we are here in transport session, it's of course convenient to just change this one option and um, uh, run again. Okay, I look. So you should now have started basically this smash run without rescheduling after you change the config. So if you have done so, please mark um, the X here. And if you are hanging anywhere, please ask uh, on Slack or here on, on Zoom. Uh, or you can also unmute yourself of course and ask the question directly what um uh what where you are hanging and what is the problem here oh i see even some people are already finished uh, this mesh on the office scheduling that was fast um of, of course you can uh, already continue to uh, follow because the next step, I mean, it will be very uh, fast, basically, what you need to do it is um, you basically run again your um, result. With, so basically, you run again your um, PT analysis. And um, then you're plotting, basically, uh, you're plotting both. And then you can look at the PT spectra plot for those of you who have already finished it. Uh, the rest is probably as um, same as me, where we are just waiting. And if you manage to start uh, the run with auto scheduling, you can um, mark the X as people are doing very good. So I briefly look in the Slack where uh, have some problems. Yeah, Manu, um, as mentioned by Chun, I think uh, if you're running Linux, you um, have to recreate the container um as uh, is explained here basically so probably delete or restart it with a different name than js mesh and then you should be able to have right uh, permissions inside the container okay so the runner has finished it will now take some time for um, the output to be written and afterwards we can compare the PT spectrum. So I don't know if my setup is faster or slower than yours. Um, it might take a bit longer to, for uh, Smash to uh, finish, or like for Jetscape to finish, um, including Smash. And as I mentioned, you can just go ahead and uh, run those two commands and plot the comparison and then take a look at the PT spectra. And now, now the question is, uh, can you notice something particular about the spectra shape? I know that the statistics is limited, but um, uh, yeah, I think it's more important to have the runs finished first and have like very good statistics for, for such a hands-on um, in this case.
and if you already uh, have some answers uh, and so on you can of course already also go on um, to the next section that's also uh, fine this is a, the next last section about the scatterings of photons will be a bit more is a bit more open so uh, 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 you're very well can exp uh, explore this uh, already and think about it Okay. Let me switch. Let me switch my. And I will copy this plotting here. So I guess uh, for most people, the smash run should be finished. Uh, for me, it's still printing out. Should be close at least. Um, and then you compare the spectra. And again, I think it would be nice if you, as uh, I just mentioned, the last section could post uh, some, uh, maybe the comparison plots. And then we can see how they look. Oh, I see some chat. Yeah, very good. I always see some good answers in the, in the chat. I hope you did not click on the answers that I already provided in the readme and just posted them in the, in the chat and, and you looked at them with yourself. But yeah, those, if you have a look at the chat, there are also already some uh, correct answers. Okay, somehow my story. I O seems to be slow. It takes some. It's a long time, so I, I think I would uh, move on. So I already run the plotting and the analysis. I already have done. And if we now look, uh, that's unfortunate. Let me. Sorry, I have to change something. I guess I have. So what I see is that I only have to have the same spectra. So maybe someone else can, uh, can I, someone post their results that they investigated on the Slack so that we can see them. Yeah, very good. So the answers were well, were hidden in this. So I open also the results. Ah. All right, good. Thanks, Hendrik, for posting them. Uh, uh, I think you can still see my screen, right? So um, you actually, you see that the pion and the pion spectra are not super um, well affected. I mean, they're a bit affected, but not so much, but the proton spectrum is considerably uh, flattening. Um, and of course, you 
for um, most of all, see this in the PT. So what you see is that the proton PT really gets affected by this afterburner rescheduling stage. So you see a really like a push basically in the PT um, to the protons, uh, which is, uh, if you look at at least, this is not mid rapidity, but if you look at mid rapidity, this is a, of, um, is a 30 percent effect basically. So there's quite some dynamics changing from the afterburner rescheduling phase. Um, and to basically see how this uh, um, changes, we can have a look now, and this is one of the big advantages of um, your transport approach that you actually have all the microscopic information, um, the microscopic scattering history basically of your evolution. Um, so we can analyze this uh, however we, we like. Um, and so to, to uh, do that, I basically uh, gave a starting point um, with this analyzed protect, uh, proton reaction script. So you can, and this is why we saved the output with rescheduling basically, you can copy this. And then run this and Okay, in this case, uh, I only have one event, you will have more events. So what this does is this basically prints out all the scattering partners of uh, um, your protons as a first step and the total uh, reaction number of protons per event as well. So you can basically, if you, if you are able to run this, you can put a check mark here. At, you basically are investigating the scattering of the protons and then you can um, first, maybe look look at what this numbers means again. So, uh, what does numbers mean? So, you go to the particles txt file, um, as I mentioned, and try to look. So, what, for example, does this two hundred eleven number mean? Which is maybe I didn't say that before, but this is the PDG number um, that identifies different particles, and you can translate this with the particles txt. But also have a look in the um, from the particle data group, there are also definitions on, on those um, numbers. And of course, like this analysis is not super useful. So simply printing out all the scheduling partner is maybe not ideal. Um, and this is now um, basically your turn to investigate the scheduling of the protons a bit more so you can think how could you investigate the proton scatterings to learn more about what influences them and in what way? And for this, you can um, take a look at the script itself. So um, analyze your proton reactions, um, the script, and see there actually there are some um, uh, properties of the scatterings are already extracted but are not used yet. Um, some ideas are you could count how often the proton scatters with a certain particle species. Or what type of scattering occurs uh, occurs more, most often, or what are the outgoing particles of the scatterings, and so on. So this is all available information. Um, if you're not super familiar with Python, because this is the Python script that analyzes, um, you can also just um, write the, your ideas in the chat or so, and, uh, and we can also try to help you implement it in the last couple of minutes. Or I can later um, post this on the on the Slack. So as I mentioned, this is a more of an open question for you to explore. We are interested to learn your ideas. And here at the bottom are the answers that I mentioned to the questions, but we already went through them. So this is more if you want to go through that by yourself. Um, so what I mean basically, just so you can, idea to is to open this script then you can take a look how this is structured and um, okay this uh, okay this line breaks are not so helpful so maybe you can take a look and uh, you can see here proton scattering properties there are some um, those are already analyzed but not used at all so maybe you can change the analysis in uh, a way that you think makes sense. And yeah, if you find something out, you can also post this on the Slack, which I think would be interesting. 
as we only have like five minutes left, uh, um, if you're super fast, you can you can post something, but uh, probably this is more for you to take as a homework. But I'm happy that like at least quite a few people managed to uh, made, managed to make it this far into this hands on. If you and as I mentioned, if you want to finish later on, this is also fine. I will be uh, on the Slack and monitor what comes up there. And yeah, I hope this gave you some ideas on what uh, was was said at the beginning. So you know basically know how to run Smash within Jetscape. So you add it to the XML. Actually, this is. Um, you can use this basically as a, what I did here as a template for that. Um, then you have a hadronic afterburner stage. Uh, you should have some ideas about the input and outputs of Smash and also learn that the afterburner actually does uh, affect your final event particle spectrum. So in, uh, if there are some final questions, uh, of course, I'm happy to help. Okay, I don't see any more questions mm -hmm. That's on, on Slack or on, on chat. So if uh, Jan, you done? Yeah, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I think. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Cool. thank you. Thank you for that very, very important session. Okay, I'm going to close today's sessions. Let's uh, let's thank all the, the speakers today, Vipay and also Jan. And, I'll, and we'll see you all tomorrow. We'll start at nine o'clock tomorrow and we'll start with Zets starting from tomorrow. Thank you. It's done.